So uh, another plug for the alpha-2 adrenergic, and we heard a little bit about hyperallergesia earlier today, but hyperallergesia also happens to be a, uh, a, a something that happens with withdrawal from opiates. In fact, you can be on opiates for a very long time and develop hyperallergesia, and it's a tolerance that you see. Uh, so painful procedures that you thought you were taking care of by giving the baby opiate, uh, in fact, they have become more sensitive to painful poor painful procedures, um, and that may not be effective anymore. And studies in using combining um, adrenergic, uh, particularly clonidine, with an opiate can reduce this side effect uh, considerably. Um, and the two studies in which are mentioned there. In a more an acute setting, um, we know about the uh, dexamethotonidine, which is the, the big guy on the block, which is um, an IV infusion that has to be given intravenously. It is an alpha-2 adrenergic agonist, very much like clonidine, but much more specific for the alpha-2 receptor versus the alpha-1. In fact, it, in the ratio, it's 1,600 to 1 versus clonidine is 200 to 1 for the alpha-2. I'm sorry, I reversed that. So it's, it's more potent than clonidine. It can have more bradycardia associated with it. It's only formulated for interven uh, intravenous use. Clonidine, on the other hand, um, is um, in the United States, there is not an intravenous uh, formulation for it, although there's a transdermal patch, if there's a tablet, and it's an epidural form, and the epidural form uh, actually can be, using, can be given intravenously. Um, and we also don't have a liquid form of uh, oral clonidine, which is a little bit of a problem because clonidine has become very uh, common in treatment of infants with and children with um, attention deficit disorder, Tourette syndrome, um, many uh, problems associated with attention. Uh, clonidine is seen to be uh, very advantageous. And the cost difference I'd like to end with with dexamethasone versus clonidine is that um, we designed this study, and if you look at clonidine, which is a, again off form, I mean it's on formulary, but it's no longer um, it's more of a generic brand. You can get it, it's very cheap, like methadone. It's very very cheap. And it would cost a dollar and eighty one cents a day to treat a baby uh, with the standard dose of clonidine, given either IV or PO. And um, that same amount of therapy using dexamethasone um, is $107 a day. So it's a 50-fold uh, increase um, in uh, the cost of dexamethasone versus that of clonidine. However, clonidine is not sexy anymore. You can get it; it's cheap. In contrast to dexamethasone, which is has a, a company behind it with lots of marketing, uh, and so that's what we end up um, using in some of the ICU environments. Um, however, I'd like to push that this is one way we can do cost, the cost of care. So my personal perspective and future directions include that neuroepinephrine sympathetic overexcitation is the common final pathway for any withdrawal from any drugs of abuse, be it nicotine, be it alcohol, be it um, uh, cocaine, be it all. This is actually, although there isn't, well, let's leave cocaine alone because there isn't really a real opiate uh, or withdrawal pattern associated with uh, cocaine um, that we've seen in infants that need treatment. So, but the other ones that I've mentioned, benzos, um, uh, alcohol, nicotine, all of those others are very effective uh, with clonidine. There is cellular evidence for crosstalk between opiate and neuroadrenergic receptors as I showed you that cell. Uh, clonidine may sense as an adjunct therapy for treatment of opiate dependency as well as there is certainly um, need um, to be able to even look at it on a acute phase because it's very good with respect to decreasing pain and it does allow the person to be sedated but arousable. It has very little respiratory depression in contrast to morphine. And I think some future directions is that it would be great if a company would develop an oral form of clonidine so that it could be safe for babies instead of giving the Duraclon, which we give, uh, it's very nice, it's only $24 a, a, a vial, but uh, it'd be nice if there was a formulation. Uh, but it's not a lot of uh, money in it, so it's likely that a pharmaceutical company won't pick it up. 
And I think we also need to start to think about whether buprenorphine versus switching a baby from methadone, from a, a short-acting opiate to methadone, might buprenorphine actually be something that we should be addressing. Currently, that is not, to my knowledge, being done in any of the ICU settings. So I leave you with that, um, and then uh, want to again acknowledge the the nursing staff and the pharmacy staff that were absolutely incredibly instrumental who allowed us to do the.